God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. That, that's, that's what shows that they were there. They're not just saying it. They were there. Now, when, they, when the spies went into the promised land, what happened? They brought fruit out of the promised land. They brought stuff out of the promised land. That's how everybody knew that they actually went into the promised land. If they came out with nothing, folk would doubt them. They said, no, you didn't go in there. How, give us a proof. Show us why we should believe you that you actually went into the promised land where there were giants. Where there were giants in the land. And those boys went in there. In spite of the fact that there were giants in the land, they were not afraid of the giants. Because greater is he that was in them. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The greater one. God Almighty live on the inside of you. You ought to be proud of who you are. That you are a child of God. Glory to God. We're going to deal with that a little bit. Let's go into scripture if you don't mind. I'm excited this morning by the word of God. It's, it's always, the, the word of God is powerful. So it said the Bible says it's powerful. And it is what? It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Any two-edged sword is sharper than it. It can cut even the dividing of soul and spirit. That's how powerful it is. It will split apart soul and spirit. And he'll look right in there between the soul and the spirit what is going on in there. That's why scripture says it discerns the intent, the intent of a man's heart. He knows exactly. He'll prove what is on the inside of me. And that's why folks are scared to read the word of God. Folks are scared to read the word of God. The folks who, who are scared come in the Bible study. Because they know it. That as you, as you hear that word. God is going to challenge your and uh, my heart. Praise Jesus. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. It, and we're going to deal with this in this service, in the, ser the nurse service, because I just feel so, so moved by this story. I've read it over and over again. But there's some, some nugget I want us to look at today. And the background of this story is that Jesus Christ had just been baptized by John the baptizer. Now the man grew up. He was a little kid walking around and helping his father. And now he's a grown man. He, he has been thrust into his real reason for being on earth. Have you been thrust into your real reason for being on earth? You just think about it. Would you say to yourself this morning that you are fulfilling the destiny of God and the very purpose of God for your life? See, this microphone I'm using now was manufactured for a reason. Before, before the manufacturer made this, they had something in their mind. And they began to think about something. That we're going to make something that will help somebody project his voice. And so the, the purpose of this is to project my voice. It will only be leaving out its very purpose when it continues to project my voice and every voice. When it stops doing that, it's good for nothing. Can't use it no more. Because it's no longer leaving out its very purpose. It will only discover its purpose in life when it continues to project every voice that's speaking to it. And you know it doesn't matter who's speaking to it. <laughs> doesn't matter who's speaking to it. You speaking to it, you project your voice. I speak to it, project your voice. That is its purpose. When I start to live out my purpose in life, I know it. That this is exactly why God allowed me to be on planet earth. And I, I believe something. That until I fulfill that purpose, because I'm a child of God, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Glory to God. I will not go nowhere. I'm here until my assignment is done. 
me here. And, and, and I, I said the last time, and I truly believe this, that when, when my prayers are not answered speedily, like quickly, it shows that God has still got some plan for my life. And my life is just going to continue until the promise comes to pass. I just believe it. You know, the folk who cry, oh, God didn't answer my prayer. Oh, God, God, he didn't answer. No, no, I, no, no, no. The more you delay, the more I live. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, look at Abraham, for instance. God has promised Abraham, I'm going to give you a child. You're going to have a son and all of that and all of that. Do you know that Abraham lived past 100? And, and he, he didn't get his promise until he was about that. 25 years have passed. Now, if he got his promise when he was 75, he probably wouldn't leave the rest 25 years or more that he lived. So the delay in the promise brought longevity to him. So don't feel bad when you feel the things that are not working out for you. Just keep walking. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> when things are not working out for you, just keep what? Working. Hallelujah. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep working. You're going to get there as long as God is on your side. You will. God doesn't lie. He does not lie. He would not lie to me. He never lied to nobody. He does not deceive. That's what Bible says. He's not a son of man that he should lie. Man lie, but God doesn't. He doesn't. It is not his nature to lie to any man. If he says he's going to save you, he will. If he says he's going to bless you, he will. Does it matter how long it takes? Does it matter how bad it looks? Yes, God will come through just in time. So have faith in God and stay with him. Glory to Jesus. And now let's look at some passages in the scripture. In, in verse 3. And when, and, and I underline that, you know, English is so rich. And you got to pay attention to every single word that is used. He said, and when, that's what he said, not if, and when. You know what that means? It will always happen. That there's a possibility, a high possibility, that this will always happen. That's what it means when it's saying when. And when the tempter. You know, Jesus was, was fasting and praying on the mountain and he was in spiritual warfare. It was only a matter of time before the tempter showed up. It was not if it will come. It is when he will show up. The same thing, you and me. It is not if the devil is going to try to derail me. It is when he comes. And therefore, knowing that, I need to be prepared. I need to be prepared. I need to be prepared in my mind. I need to be prepared in my spirit. I need to be prepared in my body. I need to be in a state of ready lot. Always ready that he may show up one day and knock on my door. And when he shows up knock on my door, I got news for you. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I tell him, go next door. You are in the wrong spot, devil. Why? Because you are ready. You know, the only reason the enemy would take me on a is because I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You know, God in heaven, nothing thinks God on the Why? Because God Almighty oversees everything that there is. My life doesn't take him on the My struggles doesn't take him on the He's not ignorant about what I will go through tomorrow. He knows exactly what's going to happen to me from the beginning, before the beginning of my life. You know what he said? He said to Jeremiah, you know what God said to Jeremiah? He said, before you were blood in water, before you were even thought of, before your mama and your papa came together, thought of getting married, 
He said, before you were blood and water, he said, I have known you. I have known you. God has known you and me before I was even thought of. Glory to God. So there's nothing about me and about you inside out that is hidden from God. There's nothing. He knew me before I was even thought of. That's what he said in his word. So there's nothing that is hidden from the almighty God. And therefore, I take solace. In the fact that God knows me inside and outside. He knows my tears. He knows my cryings. That's what he said to the children of Israel. He said, your, your tears, your science have come up to me. That's what he said to them. He said, you've been crying. I knew it. He said, after you cried and cried, you, you, started, you started not to cry no more. And now you are sighing. <laughs> you know what sighing means? And the way I look at sighing is those fears that you cannot verbalize. I don't know, you've never been there. The pain is too excruciating. You, you, you have thought about it so deeply for a length of time, you've worried so much about it. And sometimes tears have come through your cheeks. And after a while, you can't even cry no more. You try to get those tears out, you can't. Now what you do is to express your deep-seated struggle in a way that you let out steam every now and then. <laughs> when a man or a woman sigh, what is happening he, he has accumulated so much steam on the inside of him. And every now and then, he just feel like letting it out. And God said, even that one, I know it. He said, it's come to me. And I've come down to do something about it. He's always in the business of doing something about it. He said, when that tempter came, when the tempter came. And Jesus said in some of the passages, he said, the prince of this world, the prince of this world, meaning Satan, came to me and found nothing in me. In other words, he could not use me when he came. Now, the trick of the devil is always to find somebody to use. He cannot operate in this world by himself. He's finding folks to use. And like we said before, if, if God need to bless you, he'll use somebody. He'll use somebody to bless you. If Satan need to hurt you, he'll use somebody. And so he's looking for folk. And therefore, when you are in an environment where everyone is against you, it's not them, it's Satan. He just came. And he's coming through them. And sometimes you got to ignore them and walk away. Because what he wants to do, Satan will be laughing out himself when he can derail me. When I say derail, I mean displace. When he can, when he can move me out of place. That's what it means. When he can take me out of place. This is, let's just assume this is my place. And this is where God wants me to be. And this is where my blessing is going to hit me. This is where I'm fulfilling my destiny. This is where the glory of God is upon me. And you know what devil going to do? He will do everything, everything to move me from here to here. Now I'm in the wrong place. I just got this place. And that's what he's going to do. And he'll use anybody. He'll use folk. He'll use circumstances. He'll use situation. That's why a child of God needs to be wise. When he can know, no. no. No, Satan, no, you cannot. The Lord rebuke you. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. That's what you're going to do. Can't let him move you out of your place. Can't let him. When you let him, you know what's going to happen? He'll replace you. He'll replace you. And now let's look at the Bible. It said when, when, when the tempter, the tempter here is Satan, came to him. He came to him. And he said, so he can speak to. <laughs> he said. 
it not not every voice that you hear is the voice of God no you you need to be able to differentiate between who is speaking whether it's God or it's Satan and it comes when you have fellowship enough with God that you begin to understand when God is speaking now if you stay with me for a while even when you're in the parking lot and I'm speaking you know that that's pastor speaking but somebody who is just visiting the church have never been here will not be able to differentiate when I'm speaking and when somebody else is speaking why because you've been here a while and long enough to differentiate the sound and and and, and the phonetics of the person who is speaking same thing if you're new to God it'll be hard for you to understand when God is speaking or the devil is speaking but the more you fellowship with God the more you are in his presence somehow you begin to understand the voice of God it's not hard you know, folks say, where how can a man hear from me? yes we can how can a man hear from God? You are disqualifying yourself when you say to yourself, it's impossible for anybody to hear from God. You are disqualifying yourself. You will not hear from God if you are negative about that. All I need to do is to stay in fellowship with him. And the Bible says, and the tempter said. And what did he say? What did it say? Now, if I tell you, how would you feel if I tell you that Satan knows more about you than you know about yourself? I, I mean, I would, I would be feeling like I need to know more by myself if somebody would have told me that Satan knows me more than I know me. And, and he, Satan comes to Jesus, says him. He said to Jesus, if thou be, that's, that's how it's translated here. But the original translation actually is, I know that you are the son of God. I know. In other words, since you are the son of God. Since you are. He said, I don't deny that you are the son of God. Same thing you mean. Do you know that you are the son of God or a child of God? Do you know that? You know what Bible say? In John's gospel, chapter 1 and verse 12. It said, as many as receive him. You, you, you and me. The world might have told you. You can, how can you and me be a child of God? A son of God. How can we possibly be? You know, when, when, when the Bible uses the word son of God, now just listen to me. It, it, it could not project a level of divinity that's in a man or a woman. It's such a powerful word and, and a, a powerful title. Jesus is son of God in his second person in the Trinity. He's son of God in this, as the second person in the Trinity. Father, son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity of God. Father, son, and the Holy Spirit. He is son of God. Son of God. Of means that it is from God. The nature he has is the nature of God. The nature you and I have is the nature of our parents. Some of you look just like your parents. Because you are from your parent. You can walk into your parent home. You can have access to everything that your parent had. Because you are from them. When the Bible says, I am a son of God, it's saying to me, I have access to what God has. As many as receive him, 
to them gave he power to become. We were not before. To become. It takes becoming by the power that Jesus gives to me to be son of God. As many as receive him, to them gave he power to become sons of what? Of God. Being son of God, you have now the nature of God. There's divinity in the inside of you. Somewhere in the Old Testament it said, eternity has been placed in you and in me. God's nature is in you. And the devil knew it. So when the devil came, he said to Jesus, since you are the son of God, and imagine if I say the same thing to you today. Some of you will say, well, I don't know. I don't know about that, Pastor. I don't know about that. If I were to come to you and say to you, Sister, since you are a son of God, Brother, since you are a son of God, now think about your reaction. Some of you feel, well, well I, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't think I am. I'm not qualified to be. Were you qualified to be the son of your parent? Was he about qualification? <laughs> Did you have to apply to be the son of your father? <laughs> Glory to God. Or your mother? What qualifies you to be the son of your parent? Now tell me, what qualifies? You, can you even imagine what qualified you to be a son of your parent nothing because you were born of them that's all same way so it's difficult for folk to understand it you are son of the living god you are a son of god yeah we you know we're, we're we're happy to say i'm a child of god i'm a child of god but when we graduate to be son of god folk don't like that no i can't handle that but that's exactly who you are. You are a son of God. And he said to him, since you are a son of God, number one lesson here is that our identity is that we are sons of God. Number one lesson. And the devil knows it. He knows it that you are. And some of us don't even know who we are in Christ. And, and you know, Satan, Satan will love it when you have no idea of who you are. He will love it. But you know who Jesus was. And he said to him, Jesus, since you are a son of God. So, secret of uh, victorious living, number one, is that I must understand my identity as a son of God. And number two, he said, because you are son of God, command these stones. So, which means also that I can command. It is expected of a son of God to command. Suspected. So wait now, come begging, please say it and leave me alone. Leave my home, leave my days. Please say it and please just leave me alone. Please, I'm tired of that. That's not who you are. You're living beneath your privilege. If all you do is beg Satan, please get off my back. Get off my back. Please leave my kids alone. Please leave my business alone. Said he'll just be happy. I said, we got this one. We got him. But if you can rise up from your frustrations, depressions, it, 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 it's up, but yeah, you're coming up. You're, you're coming up. And you stand. Say, Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, get out of here. Then you're living your life of victory victims do like that but victors stand like this and say yes bring it on because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world i can conquer you in the name of the lord because he teaches my hand to fight and my fingers to war by him i can leap over a war by him i can run over a troop i can do all things through christ who strengthened me when you begin to talk like that the son of man and the son of god are just a reason 
you're living true to type. You are projecting my voice like this microphone. Yeah, you are. If this stop working, what are going to do? I drop it, I get another one. Right? And in and, and that moment, when it is abandoned, it is no longer living true to type. So sometimes, nature, heaven, look at us and wonder, why are them sons of God living beneath their privileges? But you know who is glad? Satan. <laughs> okay, we no longer threat to him. He dominates us now. So he knew, son of God, number one, we know our identity. And number two, we know our authority. We can command. And what he said, Jesus, he said, since you are a son of God, he said, command these stones to become bread. You know why he would tell him to do that? Because he can do it. Yeah, that's why he wouldn't. Satan wouldn't tell him to do what he couldn't do. Because he could do it. He could command. Now, think about it. Stones. Stones. He, he, he's not even bringing him flour and say, all right, we know bread made out of flour. All right, just make this bread out of flour. That, that, this is stone. Dead hard. Dirt. And he said to him, since you are a son of God, you have the power to do this. Now do it. The reason he told him to do it is because Jesus can do it. When I come to the realization, to my identity, and I understand my authority, I stay in that privilege of being able to command. Command the door open and it will in the name of Jesus. It's not it's not by your power, nor by my power. This is not magic. It's not by your power, nor by my power. It's the power of God. And scripture confirms that there's power in that authority and in that name. That I can command diseases to leave and they will. Demons to evacuate and they will. I can speak to the sun. I can speak to the moon in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they'll listen. It's not magic. It's just me getting to know who I am in God. My identity that brings me to my authority. And I can command things. I can command sadness to get out of my life. You don't know that? Yes, you can. You're feeling sad. You're feeling down. You can command it. You spirit of sadness, get out of my life. And it will. Because you're commanding them, not in your name, but in the name of Jesus Christ, to get out of Those are some of the secrets of living a victorious life. And, and then, and then the, the, the devil, after he commanded them, and then Jesus said something in verse 4. He said, but he answered and said unto him, it is already written. It's already written, man, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus said to him, it is already written that man... In our humanity, man, not the spirituality, man in our naturality shall not live by bread alone. And now don't forget the word alone. Jesus is not saying you should not live by bread. Jesus is saying that, yes, we survive by bread. But it cannot be by itself. He said, man cannot live by bread alone. But, so the, the, the 
higher level of living is by the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It's the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And now, listen to this very carefully. Don't get me wrong. Make sure you understand. If you don't have that service, ask me a question. The word that proceeded out of the mouth of God here does not necessarily mean what you read when you study your Bible. It could be, but not necessarily. In the beginning, the word was the Lord created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Yes, that's a word. But it's a word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That is a word that is specially released for you. That's a tailor-made word for you. That's a word of revelation for you. You know, you can be in a service like this, and I, I'm speaking for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And one word out of my 45-minute speech may just be all. That stuck with you at the end of the service. You know why? Because that word was for you. Not for me. It was for you. And that's the word that's going to save you. That's what you live out of this place with. And you continue to meditate on it all day, all night. It will not leave you. You will dream about it. You will talk about it when you are sleeping. You will tell everybody about it. Why? Because that word was your word. That's how you know that the word proceeded out of the mouth of God. Not, not memorizing the Bible is good. That's not what I'm talking about here. What makes me a victorious Christian is being able to pick out a word that proceed out of his mouth. Pick out a word that proceed out of his mouth. What did he tell you lately? What is he speaking to you now? If at the end of this service, as you're walking out of this place, and you got something from all that I said. And you can hold on to it all day long, all night long. That is a word that proceed out of God's mouth just for you. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus wasn't discounting bread. Food is good. He's not saying that. Food isn't good. That's why the writer, the translator, the word alone, because that's what it's here. But he introduced the word, but, but, how does man live? You know, if you, if you rewrite that, rephrase this, he would say, and he answered to him, man shall live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's it. That's it. Take out the details. That's how it will read. Now, first, I know my identity. I know my authority. And now, how do I stay in it? It's every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That everybody say, you cannot do it. You don't have what it takes to do it. You have not learned enough to be able to do it. And then you come home to God. And God says to you, yes you can. For I have given you all things that pertains to life and godliness. Yes you can. You know what's going to happen? You will have to choose between that word that proceeded out of the mouth of God and what circumstances are fo and folks are telling you. If you're a, a Christian who want to live a victorious life, you stay with what God just said. Everybody told me, yes, it's not possible. Yes, you cannot do it. Yes, you don't have what it takes. And I just came to God. God said, yes, you can. And I, I, I yes, I can. And I begin to, yes, I can. And I begin to tell myself, yes, I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do it because the Father told me I can. 
You know what I'm doing? I'm living my life based on the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's what he said. That man live. Man live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That is a revealed word for you. That's a, a specially packaged word for you. And when God gives you those words and he gives you that revelation, don't throw it away. God is saying to you, that is your life right there. If you want to be victorious, Christian, that's exactly what you need for that moment. And let nobody take it from you. Not your mind, not the devil. Nobody must take it from you. That is the secret right there for your victorious living. Just lift up your hand and bless the Lord. We're closing now. Lift up your hand. Bless God. Tell him, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm a son of the living God. I know my authority. I can command. I know how I stay in my authority. It's by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Just tell him, Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. And, and, and tell God, today I have my mind made up. I will no longer, I will no longer let circumstances and situation and people speak to my ears beside God and the word that proceed out of the mouth of God. And if you don't understand God, you don't know God, tell him, God, I want to fellowship with you more. I want to fellowship with you more so I can know when you're speaking. Differentiate the word of God from the word of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May we rise in the presence of the Lord this morning. God is good. Today is our communion Sunday. Today we share together the body and the blood. And we renew our covenant with Jesus again. That we are sons of God. And we have come to fellowship with the almighty God. And tell him, Lord, as I, as I partake of the communion today, I prepare myself to receive from you. If there be anything in me that would deny me the benefits of the communion, Lord, please take it from me. Because I want to receive the blessing of the cup. And the blessing of the bread. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, let it bless my life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell God, put something in my hand. And put something in my spirit. As I touch the communion element. Lord, put something in my spirit. That stays with me throughout my life. In the name of Jesus, let life, true life, come alive in me. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just bless the Lord one more time. Bless him one more time. Bless him one more time. Bless him one more time. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, bless us in Jesus' name. Let your presence, oh God, surround us and let your breath come upon this element. That he bless everyone that will touch it and everyone that will eat of it. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401 954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. 
Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.